Please welcome Ms. Scarlett Singh, 94.3 IFM. Simon, and uh, good afternoon everybody. I'm going to tell you the love story of the couple. It all started around January of 1998 at the second level of the University of Negros Occidental Recoletto's main building, where both the groom and the bride finished their college. It was in an organization's election when they first saw each other. There was no spark of the moment love at first sight experience yet. In fact, the bride was annoyed at the groom when, as the vice president, he was asked to choose among the candidates for the organization's secretary, where the former was one of the nominees he didn't choose for. The following week, they keep on bumping on each other in the hallways, at the alley, and one time at the library veranda, where along with a friend. They spent more than an hour talking about practically nothing. She fondly called him Mano. It was a platonic high and low acquaintance then. Until one fateful thing happened. He quit college due to financial difficulty and looked for a job. He lost contact with her for almost the other hand, was on her third year in college, and was a volunteer in an AM radio station as a co-anchor for a Christian music program. It was not just the job that made them met again. It was a listener named Mel Tirai, who used to call the groom during his nighttime program, who gave him the, no or the bride's number. The groom, having been out of a year and a half relationship at that time, thought he was not yet ready for another, if that giving of number would, li or would lead to another love affair. Well, I personally heard of that confusion because I was his confidant since then. We were both neophyte DJs on that FM radio station. That listener was a regular caller too of the bride in her MWF program. After the groom got the bride's number, he didn't call her yet. Nantirai would call to check if he called that mysterious number already, and would continue to encourage him to give it a try. Finally, he did. That initial call lasted for more than an hour without both of them knowing that they had already met back then. After the conversation, the bride thought of the person she just knew on the phone as somebody who's tall, fair, and of good build. Pero na si Hagen. Just kidding. She draws him in her imagination through his voice on the phone and on the radio. At her tender age of 19, many suitors would walk her way and try to get her attention. Many would try to ask her for a date, but she would often refuse. Seafarers, engineer, fellow teacher, activist, and even a pastor asked her to go out, but to no avail. Later, too, she admitted that it seemed that her mind and heart is still looking for somebody, yet she didn't know who. Why was another question in her mind, too. Until one day, a week after that conversation, they finally met. And I knew it. It was there. The groom panicked when he realized that the lady sitting was the one who was talking with on the phone a few nights back. When he, when he entered the room, or the room, sorry, he was on his back as if not aware that she was inside. It was a fellow DJ, as far as I can remember, um, John Magdalagan, and I who broke his as if disguise and announced to her that he's the guy she was talking with on the phone. When they come in face to face, candidly, they both exclaim in surprise, in unison, the word ikaw. They both can't believe they would um, be hooked up like that when they in fact had already met each other two years back. Nang Tirai was not aware that they both had met back in college. Another mystery was the groom and the bride then were like two long lost friends led back to each other, again be somebody who is physically blind. Where's Nang Tirai? Nang Tirai is wearing stripes and pink, not a pink. Si Nang Tirai ay cold break. The bride later admitted that she felt that the gap was filled, that she found him again. He knew to himself right then that he finally found her. Believe it or not, but better believe it anyway, 
He made a promise to himself while practically flying the three-story flight of stairs on that very night that he would marry her one day. He claimed he experienced deja vu while meeting her. He saw her in his mind as his wife. After that meeting, he pursued her for eight long months. And last March, 31 of this year, they quietly spent their eight-year anniversary. The groom and the bride have known and been with each other for almost a decade now. Like every relationship, they too underwent many trials, but I know they would see it through. He was her first boyfriend, and she was his last after he met her. None of them were doing moonlighting. And today, as we witness their union, let us be their community of support system that they could always draw strength, encouragement, guidance, fellowship, and acceptance. Congratulations and best wishes to you both. Thank you very much. Let's get a soccer resounding applause.